That's right. So the big news out of Cobb County Superior Court at the end of this week has been, will the trial stay in Cobb County? The defense has filed a motion asking that the judge transfer it out. Well, one of the big questions is, does he have a lawyer? Because if so, a responsible criminal defense lawyer is probably going to tell him, don't say a word. So if that's the case, they're not going to get any information because I guarantee you they're trying to interview him if possible. What are we looking at here with the latest developments? Yes, but what this is, this is the culmination of uh, some very good lawyering by both sides. Uh, the, the defense filed various motions alleging constitutional violations by the police in seizing evidence and collecting evidence, um, essentially violations of his Fourth Amendment rights. What's next for these 11 now convicted felons? Well, right now, uh, in the very immediate future, what they're doing is they're being booked into the Fulton County Jail, which is where they will stay at least until the sentencing hearing, which I understand the judge set for next week. What are the issues that the judge is going to have to consider here? Well, those are the uh, statements that came out last summer during the probable cause hearing. We might hear more about the rest of the context of that. The judge, in determining whether or not that's admissible, has to decide whether or not he was in custody. If so, were Miranda warnings given? And overall, was that a voluntary conversation? What is normal trained protocol for when you're going to do one of these raids in the middle of the night? You do surveillance. Well, you do adequate surveillance. You make sure you know where you're throwing that grenade. We have on this very show uh, thrown Oscar Pistorius under the bus because he fired a gun through a door not knowing, as he claimed, who was on the other side. And even that alone was negligent, criminally negligent. What are the legal options for these women? They're, they're extremely limited. Um, as you mentioned, the statute of limitations has run, but what it has, has not run on is potential defamation claims. You mentioned uh, Tamara Green has filed a defamation action against Mr. Cosby. He has to either be the most prolific sex offender known to mankind or else the worst victim of character assassination, one of the two. On that issue, ironically, I think that the judge should not be recalled. I think the judge can answer for it, certainly at the next uh, election, when he stands for re-election. But judges, as a general rule, should not be bound by public opinion uh, to sentence someone in any particular way, either more harshly or more lenient. Actually, kind of a basic question, but but I've wondered it all along. So this guy deported five times. What loopholes in our law system exist for him to come and go, come and go, come and go as a criminal? Well, the loophole in terms of the ICE detainer is that the courts have interpreted it as not mandatory. So Congress could come in, I think, and fix this and say this is mandatory. We also could get immigration judges to issue warrants instead of it simply being a request by an ICE officer. The wife filing for a divorce will help the defense in this case, or is it insignificant? It's, <clears throat> if it has a significance, it could possibly help the defense case, because if she gives uh, evidence that's favorable to the prosecution, they could say, look, you've got an interest in the outcome of this case because it's hard to defend a lawsuit uh, when you're in prison. And this is why I find myself in the unique position of agreeing with Edward Snowden on this point. <laughs> uh, once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't get the genie back exactly. in the bottle. And so once, say, for example, China and other jurisdictions that have wanted this type of uh, technology to exist, once they know that Apple can do it, if they're forced to create it, they can insist, you know, we're not going to let you import anything into our country unless it has this technology built into it. So he was a big man. He had a big personality in all senses, didn't, what, didn't he? He absolutely did. He was an icon. Whether you agree with him politically, whether you agree with him legally, there's no question in anybody's mind that he was absolutely a powerhouse on the court. Well, what they're doing, Anna, great to be here, by the way, what they're doing is they are bringing in current and former students who are going to talk about this culture that they're calling it, this sexually deviant culture. And so in America, we don't prosecute people based on their character. We do not blame people for uh, committing a crime because they have a certain character trait. This guy could be the most voracious sexual animal on campus, but unless he actually forced her to have sexual intercourse, he is not guilty of a crime.